it, Harriet? We all know you guys want to be together, so just like, come on. Is it giving Beach Read vibes? Is it topping it? Is it less good? What's the deal, Sabine? Okay, so it's, what time is it actually? I have no clue. Okay, it is almost 1 a.m. And I've been meaning to read this book sooner, earlier, but my TikTok edition is not okay and I wanted to stop. That's besides the point though. I have read about 10% of the book actually. Yes. <laughs> That's just all that I could say. I don't know how Emily Henry does it, but she immediately just like sucks me into the story and I just want to consume every single word that she writes. What is Happy Place about though? I didn't even need to know the plot of this book to be like, I'm gonna buy it the second that it comes out. However, <laughs> we get introduced to this six person friend group. So Cleo and Kimmy, Sabrina and Parth, and then you have Harriet and Wynne. And every single year they go on this summer trip to this amazing cabin by the sea, I think, Knott's Harbor in Maine. And they know each other through Harriet, Cleo, and Sabrina. Like they were roommates once. So it's three couples. However, Harriet and Wynne actually are kind of broken up. <laughs> but like no one knows in the friend group and they're keeping it a secret. This year, it's gonna be the last time that they will be spending this summer together as a group of six because the cottage is getting sold. That is how the story starts off. Like we kind of get a little impression of how three girls like kind of met. Even though I'm only 37 pages in, I almost started to tear up once because in my opinion, Emily Henry doesn't have super like poetic writing. It's not super whimsical, but she just describes things so well. Let me see if I can like give you a little example because I think I already like underlined a couple of sentences, literally the first page in. I feel like friendship is gonna also be an important theme in this book. So this little passage describes friendship. We were loud. I'd never been loud before. I grew up in a quiet house where shouting only ever happened when my sister came home with a questionable new piercing or a new love interest or both. The shouting always gave way to an even deeper silence after, and so I did my best to head the shouting off at the pass because I hated the silence, felt every second of it as a kind of dread. My best friends taught me a new kind of quiet, the peaceful stillness of knowing one another so well you don't need to fill the space in a new kind of loud. Noise as a celebration, as the overflow of joy at being alive here now like it's not complicated writing but it just it hits the spot and it makes me feel a certain type of way so yeah totally not far into it at all but i'm hoping to be consuming a whole lot of pages tomorrow so i can give you a little non-spoilery update on where the story is kind of going and how it's making me feel but first i gotta sleep <laughs> yeah my parents house so this is my room if you didn't know already every time i look at these shelves i get so happy but that's not what we're talking about right now so we can stay focused happy place update because i am over halfway through chapter 20 aka page 212 out of the 360 ish pages so i got more to tell you about what I think of the story until so far. How am I enjoying it? How was the romance? Is it giving beach read vibes? Is it topping it? Is it less good? What's the deal, Sabine? Let me tell you. <laughs> so I have, I'm liking it, <laughs> but I have some mixed opinions on Win, our love interest. The thing is you get told from the beginning that this is like a second chance romance. Like, I mean, it's a romance novel. You know that they will eventually end up. That's not a spoiler, okay? So Harriet and Win broke up six months ago. They're keeping it a secret. And this story is kind of told in two different timelines. So you have like Harriet's happy place timelines, which are all in the past when she was still together with Win, And you kind of like get to know how they met each other how their romance slowly started to grow when they met in college. They couldn't really be together, but you know, there was just so much tension and so much love for one another that they just had to end up together. And then you are following the story in the now with the friend group. One of the three couples is getting married at the cottage because it is their last moment to all be together since the cottage is being sold. And Wynne and Harriet are like keeping up this whole act with their whole friend group. And I feel like some of the friends 
definitely are suspecting that something is going on with them. And there is just so much talk about heartbreak in this book as well. And I have never been broken up with, or I myself have never broken up a relationship, but you know, relationships are highs and lows. And because of the talks about the heartbreak, it reminds me a little bit about the lows, the possible lows in a relationship. And that just makes me feel a little like, it makes me feel a little heartbroken myself, which is not what I want. But I do know that like Emily Henry's writing style, she does it so well. Like she brings so much depth into like just a romance story. <laughs> she always writes about characters that definitely need therapy. <laughs> You're just like, honey, please go see a therapist. You got some problems. You got some mommy issues. You got some daddy issues. Like what is going on here? And the same goes for Wynne. Like he has such an inferiority complex, but until so far, I'm just like not really able able to be in love with our love interest myself, which did happen with Beach Read, which did happen with You and Me on Vacation and with Book Lovers. Like I felt like I knew why the girl main character was in love with the guy main character. And with Wynne, I'm kind of like, eh. <laughs> what Emily Henry does really well again in this book is to create those like nostalgic summer vibes, or at least that's kind of like the feeling that comes up with me when I read this book. Just like having such a great time with your friends, having nothing really to care about, going swimming, going to the cinema, having this lovely weather. It just makes you feel very nostalgic for summer, which I absolutely love. Ah, I don't want to finish an Emily Henry book. You know what I mean? You just want to keep on reading it. And um, I need more romance books like these with depth, but also with love and happiness. Let's see what the last third of the book will be like and if it will kind of heighten up my experience, my thoughts on this book. So I did a little reading session at my favorite reading spot. Like, can you understand why? I guess you can. Just listen. It's so lovely. Page 272 and like, when it Harriet we all know you guys want to be together so just like come on do it be honest share your feelings because i'm getting tired <laughs> not of this view though <sighs> so stunning. Oh. this makes me so happy i love spring <laughs> guys, I did it. Uh, I finished Happy Place and now I am having an Emily Henry hangover. <laughs> Honestly, like what do you do with your life after you finish another masterpiece by one of your favorite authors? How do you cope? I, I need advice, okay? <laughs> so I finished this book yesterday. I was reading it sporadically throughout the day, every single time that I had time to consume more of this book. And even though I still loved it because Emily Henry just sucks you into a story so well. She could write a book with a bad plot and I would still love it. But we'll get more into my Emily Henry ranking of her four books. Because this one might be in the last place. I, just, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't really consider it a spoiler, but if you want to know absolutely nothing about this book or even the slightest bit about how the plot moves forward, click away, I guess, but I'm not really going to go into depth with how things kind of like work out for the characters and their dynamics, etc. The last third of this book really kind of like focuses on Harriet and Wynne, like how their relationship initially kind of like ended and how they do or don't really like tell the friend group and everything and how that kind of like works out. And it was heartbreakingly beautiful, which I think Emily Henry always does such a good job at describing frustrations between characters. And she does not avoid conflict in her books. Her characters, even though they kind of have like these outbursts of anger and can really like kind of bash on one another, they always come around in such a beautiful, realistic way, in my opinion. I've said this many times before, it's way more than just a romance novel. I'd say Happy Place is actually mostly a novel about friendship, mainly friendships that you make early on in life and how you do or don't maintain them when you get older, as all of you are becoming kind of different 
people. You're discovering what you want with your life, your career choices. Um, do you want to get married? Do you not want to get married? Do you want to have kids? Like it's very complicated and it's kind of like a phase in which I am going into because I'm like 24 and like some of my friends are living together. They bought a house and I am just here in my student dorm, still finishing my second bachelor's degree. And I still have like three years left of studying. And it's something that I'm currently kind of being confronted with. And it's very interesting to kind of like read about those things in Happy Place, even though these characters are, let's say about like eight to 10 years older than I am right now. <laughs> now, uh, Wynne and Harriet, I think are my least favorite couple of the four books until so far. I'm a little unsure because it's been about a year. It's been exactly a year, I guess, since I finished reading Beach Read and then I consumed all of her books. It's just because this book talks a lot about going through a breakup. It's like a second chance romance. I, I don't know if I fare well with second chance romances. It's like that book from Carly Fortune, which is called One Last Summer, I think. I, I don't even remember. I initially really loved that book, but the second chance romance element really like involved cheating which i really despise this one does not so that's what i prefer with a second chance romance but uh, it's just like that heartbreak that you have to get through which is not what i love to read about At times man this was a sad book too <laughs> i definitely started tearing up last night as well when i was finishing it and i have put so many like quotation marks on it as well with some of my favorite passages and Emily Henry just really describes what it feels like to be in love. And <laughs> I think that Harriet and Wynne definitely have some attachment style issues, but I don't know. I think maybe like Harriet and Wynne have kind of like anxious attachment styles. Like when it becomes too much, like either one of them kind of like walks away or avoids confrontation because they don't want to hurt the other person and kind of like, they just don't want to lose each other. I feel like it's kind of being hinted at as well that Harriet has some kind of um, OCD tendencies because when something bad happens or she's not, not feeling well or she's having struggles with her mom, for instance, or with Wynne, she kind of like makes up rules in her head of if I do this chore, then everything will be all right. If I do this, then it'll be okay. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like being hinted at. It's not like diagnosed or anything, but I guess it might be triggering for some people who are dealing with OCD, but I'm not 100% sure. So don't take my word as the truth, okay? And it does also touch upon grief of one of our characters' parents. I mean, Emily Henry just serves it all to us. Emotional damage upon emotional damage, and she does reconcile it at the end. I already want to like remove my whole reading experience of this book to be able to read it again for the first time. Now, can I make a ranking? I always find this so hard. I mean, okay, number one, still obviously Beach Read. I would love to give it a reread to see where it would stand on the ranking right now. Uh, it's actually becoming way harder because I loved You and Me on Vacation. And I know a lot of people don't necessarily love that one, but I read that book and Book Lovers back to back, which was kind of a mistake because getting an overload of something that is so good can also be a little too much. I do remember liking book lovers a little less. But like I said, that might be because I read those back to back and I didn't take a little break in between. So I'm gonna put those on a shared second and third place and then happy plays on number four. I do really appreciate the whole friend group in this book. I think that that was my highlight of happy place and the whole setting at the cottage, spending like this summer vacation together. It just, it brings me back like those nostalgic feelings of my summers in France as well. But I was less a fan of Harriet and Wynne. I mean, they are the star couple, the main characters of this book. So I think happy place is my least favorite until so far. Uh, it's so difficult, but let me know in the comments down below whether you have read Happy Place. If so, what did you think of it? Where is it on your Emily Henry ranking scale? Let me know whether you agree with some of my opinions on this book too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below, and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!